So Sony has released news on their brand new Pro Controller coming to the market very soon called the DualSense Edge. This is supposed to be the answer to Microsoft's Elite Series 2 controller, which, you know, by the way, Sony, like, why the heck hasn't there been a Pro Controller already for the PS5? You know, it's already been out for over two years now, you know, and Microsoft has had their Pro Controller on the market for a while. So it's kind of disappointing that, um, you know, they're finally coming out with their answer to the Elite controller. But anyways, there's some disappointing news that comes along with this. And before I get into, of course, going over this news, a news article from Kotaku, uh, make sure if you guys do go on to enjoy this video to leave a like on it, subscribe if you are new to the channel, turn the post notification bell on, and without further ado, let's get into checking out this article from Kotaku.com. Of course, the uh, link to this will be in the description of this video if you want to head there and check it out for yourselves. But anyways, it says Sony's new $200 PS5 controller dies faster than the original. Oh, that's not good news to hear. Anyways, it says Sony's new PS5 controller, the wireless DualSense Edge looks normal enough. It has the right number of buttons and enough space to rest your hands on its boomerang shaped plastic, but its extreme customization presumably explains why it costs $200, almost three times the base price of the standard PS5 controller. A premium price for a premium product, I guess, as long as you're not expecting it to live as long as its predecessor. Now, before I continue reading, that is absolutely terrible news for the consumers that plan on buying this Pro Controller or DualSense Edge Controller from Sony, especially since the price tag is $200, you know? It's like, at that rate, you're almost better off just spending money on one of those, like, third-party mod pack things that you could just, you know, attach to your controller and it gives you those additional back buttons, you know? And that's something that I wanted to talk about, besides just the bad battery life, is also that this only has two back buttons, you know? That's kind of a problem in my opinion, especially for that $200, considering that Microsoft's Elite controller comes with, you know, the four remappable buttons on the back, and then Razer's offering also comes with the four. Even on their new PS5 offering that they just came out with, it's still offering, you know, the four remappable back buttons, and to me, if you're only having two, I just can't justify the $200 price tag. Maybe $150, sure, you know, it's a pro controller, there's more features, this and that, whatever. 150 I think would be maybe okay, maybe even 120 let's just say. I just can't justify $200, especially when you're not getting the four buttons, you know, and even Razer's offerings a little bit too much in my opinion, even with those additional buttons on the back, you know. Um, I, I don't know much about it. I didn't look too much into it. I've just seen the design. I know it has the four buttons on the back. I don't really know what else it offers, but that comes in at $250, $50 more than Sony's new DualSense Edge controller, and I can't even justify that, and I'm a diehard Razer guy. I love Razer. I'm sitting in a Razer Razer chair, I have a Razer mouse that I use, um, you know, Razer headsets, keyboards, you name it. I'm team Razer all the way, but even at 250, I just can't justify that price. You know, that's a little bit too much. And then 200 for this one is still a little bit too much in my opinion, especially since it has the bad battery life and it lacks those two additional back buttons that you would normally see on like an Elite controller or something from like Razer. You know what I mean? To me, you need the four buttons. That's just the way it is because I personally like like to remap I don't even use these buttons really you know I like to remap all the back paddles or buttons to take over the normal functions of these buttons you know what I mean so to me I just can't justify the price but let's continue reading this article here and let's see what they go on to say so it says Sony isn't really hiding that at least in the hands-on preview the Verge notes that PlayStation spokesperson Ken Zhang said the new DualSense uh, will have a moderately shorter operating time than the original PS5 controller which has between between 5 and 10 hours of charge. We've included many more features within the same form factor and ergonomic design as the original DualSense controller, Zane continued. Additionally, the longer USB braided cable is also great for uh, competitive players who prefer playing with a wired connection to avoid wireless interference. This option preserves battery life. So if you're somebody that plays super competitive, super sweaty, aggressive, whatever you want to call it, and you don't mind being wired up, and if you are wired up most of the time anyways, this isn't really going to be a big issue with the uh, bad battery life, but if you're somebody that likes to just kick it back on the couch and just kind of chill and play their stuff wirelessly, 
this might be a big problem. Let's continue here with the article. So Zhang did not specify how much shorter battery life would be, and Sony did not immediately respond to Kotaku's request for elaboration. In any case, it seems like according to Sony, the main pull of the DualSense Edge shouldn't be the battery anyway, but the ultra customizable controls it's been touting in trailers and web store descriptions. Most of DualSense Edge's features can be mapped or changed, including its swappable joysticks, which you have to buy separately. Oh my goodness, what? Sony, you're charging people $200 for this controller. It has bad battery life. It's missing the four button design on the back. And now you're telling us that you have to buy the additional swappable joysticks? What are you paying $200 for? I know you're getting those two additional buttons and some additional features built into the controller inside of the same form factor design as the original, you know, PS5 controller, but my goodness, $200 and there's already three big no-nos that stand in the way of this thing. You know what I'm saying? Now, if we take a look at what's included here, I did skip over some of this and I probably won't read the rest of this here, but I do want to go over what's included with the PS5 DualSense Edge controller. It does say, of course, it comes with the case, the controller, USB braided cable, two standard stick caps, two high dome stick caps, two low dome stick caps, two half dome back buttons, two lever back buttons, connector housing, and the instruction manual. Um, so yeah, that's everything included for the $200 price tag, but man, I cannot believe you actually have to pay for the additional joysticks, the swappable joysticks. I think that's also another deal breaker there to factor in with the two other things that I was talking about. But um, anyways, guys, I think that's pretty much gonna conclude this video. Let me know what you think about Sony's brand new DualSense Edge controller down below in the comment section. Will you guys be picking this controller up? Will you be holding off on it? Will you maybe be buying Razer's offering? Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. Remember to leave a like on the video, guys. Subscribe if you're new. Turn the post notification bell on. Maybe leave a super thanks for the channel. You do get a highlighted message if you do that. And I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Have an awesome rest of your day or night and see you later.